Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you guys oh, and help with some preening um, about whether or not you should cage birds together or separately. And first of all, in the comments, I would love to know what you currently do. Do you have multiple birds and do you cage them together or separately and why? Um, so a basic rule of thumb for me and my birds is I try to cage them as individually as possible, as often as possible, so that when I need to cage them together, they're more excited to spend time together, they're not sick of one another, they're looking forward to it. These guys have actually been in separate aviaries, which is why they are <laughs> helping each other preen and they're enjoying being together right now so much. Um, which is awesome, this is kind of ideal, this is what I like to see. And I think that this happens because they're not forced to be together all the time. So they're not on top of each other all the time. They're not having to share their food, their water, their space, their favorite perches, their favorite toys. It's divided so they all have their own time. And then when they come together, they're excited to spend time together and they're more likely to get along. So that's kind of what I do with my own birds. However, there are some funky dynamics in my flock that make this possible or not sometimes. Um, these guys get along the best out of my flock. They are brothers, they are hatched just a few days apart. Um, and so they've kind of always been together as far as they've been raised together. So they've always done fairly well. However, they were raised with my blue-throated macaw Jinx who really messes with the dynamic. So Jinx can be housed with either of these guys just the two of them, right? So if it's Jinx and Comet, it's fine. If it's Jinx and Tusa, it's fine. If it's Comet and Tusa, it's fine. But if it's all three, it's all chaotic. <laughs> um, the dynamic's just totally off. There's a, there's a third wheel. Uh, so when it comes to caging birds together, the biggest dynamics that you need to be aware of is First of all, gender, um, whether or not you're putting two males together, two females, a male and a female, uh, whether or not you're looking to have them breed or not. Some birds, like Morgan, for instance, who is a Camelot macaw I worked with, she was very hormonally triggered by my male birds. And so housing them together could have caused problems. Having her with either of these guys more consistently um, would have triggered her hormones more often than when I would have liked to see. Um, so if you also have that issue, then a way to, of avoiding that is obviously not housing them together, but still allowing them to be around each other and be together. The biggest concern I have when it comes to people asking me whether or not they should cage together or separately is size. The size of the bird and the size of the enclosure. So the size of the bird, I would never put a budgie with a macaw because one little accident and that budgie would be dead. Um, it would just be a horrible tragedy. However, I wanna preface this with the fact that things can go wrong at any point in time. So even if you have birds like these guys, sorry, there's all this like, <laughs> stuff on you guys um, where they have always gotten along and everything's always been great that doesn't mean that one day things aren't great and they might have a spout about something and one of them gets hurt so that's kind of the risk you take when you house birds together um, something can go wrong there's a horrible horrible story about two Amazons a male and a female that used to always get along and it was a story from a rescue where one day they didn't and the male almost killed the female and it was really horrific and really sad and it's something that you just need to be aware of the risks so you understand what kind of risks you're taking. I try to minimize that risk by making sure that when they do come together, they're more likely to get along and more likely to be happy to see each other than if they're together all the time and then out they're together all the time. If you had to constantly share your stuff all the time, it would get real old real fast and you wouldn't really appreciate being around that other person or you might get sick of them really quickly. I try to avoid these guys ever feeling that way. So housing them separately as much as possible is what I like to do um, so then when I do bring them together maybe I want to fit more birds outside so I start pairing them together it works out and is harmonious so um, yeah and, and the big rule of thumb there is to separate the birds before they show discomfort in being together so if they start bickering in the aviary I'm like oh it's time for them to be separated I want to have figured that out days before did you want to come hi um, so I wanted, I want to separate them while they're still getting along so that everything is super good. And then when they come together, it's awesome. So everything is harmonious the whole time, ideally. Hmm, got a cuddle bucket. You are molting, you just have stuff coming off you in waves.
So then the other size thing I mentioned was the size of the enclosure. So if your cage is really tiny, it only has two food dishes, which means has one room for water, one room for food. It's probably not ideal for birds to be sharing because I most likely one bird is gonna become more dominant over the other. So when I put uh, my two galahs, Bondi and Bandit together, Bandit is the more dominant one. He's the one that's gonna protect the food dish against Bondi. Bondi is a lot more submissive and easygoing. Um, Whereas when I put Bandit and my Congo African Grey Cressy together, Cressy's the more dominant. She, she's the foodie of all. She doesn't want to share. She's the one that's going to eat out of her dish and then go over and eat out of his dish. Um, so I, can, I could not house Cressy and Bandit together full time for a long amount of time. I can house Cressy and Bondi together, Bondi and Bandit together. There are certain dynamics that work and certain ones that don't. So really keep an eye on your bird and make sure that you're doing the best by your bird safety wise. Uh, make sure that you have a really big enclosure with plenty of food and water and toys and favorite perches and things that they're really gonna like that they're not gonna fight over. That's really the key here. So don't shove birds together in small enclosures. It's not nice. Um, the other thing I like about housing the birds separately is I can tell how much they're eating. I can really keep an eye on their droppings to see that they look normal. Um, and I can just tell overall health wise that they're getting enough food because a lot of the time if I house Cressy with anybody else, <laughs> she's going to eat a portion and a half and that other bird is only going to get a half portion. And it's really hard to control the food at that point and know how much your bird is eating that it's not overeating or undereating or getting bullied. Um, so I like to keep an eye on that kind of stuff. Also, my birds get a little bit differences in diet. So Cressy is my female Congo African Grey and she gets a calcium supplement. So I don't need these guys getting a calcium supplement so I wouldn't really want them sharing food. Um, so that's just kind of something else to keep in mind. If the diet is different between your birds, maybe you have completely different species of birds that have a completely different diet based on what your vet has tell, told you or one's on medication or, or one's switching over to a healthier diet whereas the other one's already there. Um, you might want to keep that separate so that you can tell what's going on and how much food that bird is getting. So that's kind of another reason that I like to keep mine separate for the most part so that I can really tell and dive into the health of each and every single bird. Okay, the sun is out, so I am going to wear my sunglasses because it is super bright on my eyes, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so one of the questions that I get is, if your birds get along, should you house them together? Again, it goes back to what I said before. Ideally, you want to have them spend time out of the cage together. That's really what they're going to enjoy um, versus being housed together. I'm really an advocate of housing separately just for utmost health, being able to tell everything that you need to be able to tell um, to keep your bird healthy and just for the betterment of the bird, not having to worry. There's been times where uh, I just had those project birds, Lefty and Touche, and there were times when I first got them, I was like, man, I really don't know these birds that well. Should I house them together? Because what if? You know, just what if something happened and it really scared me. Um, so quite a lot of time I did house those guys separately or put them on separate perches or, or whatever I needed to do just till I got to know them a little bit better. But um, like I said, you never know, something can always go wrong. So I like to do it individually and then when they're out, just hanging out, they can come together and really enjoy everybody. Um, and I think that's enough. So um, again, I do house my birds together quite a bit. Um, but I try to be really particular about it. So it's more about, I have four aviaries out here, which you guys will see in a minute. And if I'm trying to fit all the birds out at once, I do need to double up to be able to do that. So I definitely do it. I just try to do it um, as least as I, as little. Oh my gosh, talking again, not my forte apparently. I try to do it as little as possible so that all the birds are always enjoying each other. The other concern that people tend to have about housing birds together is that they feel like they'll get more bonded to each other than to the person. Most of the time what people are referring to when they're talking about these birds bonding to each other instead of the human is that the human hasn't done any training or any, um, 
I guess, work uh, into showing and proving that the relationship with a human is uh, awesome. Uh, so I do believe if you tame and train uh, the two birds individually uh, to where you have a relationship with both and then you house them uh, together, it's not a problem. Uh, like with these guys, I have a relationship with both of them and they're, I wouldn't say they're more bonded to each other over me. I would say they, they come out when I ask them to, they go back in when I ask them to. Um, there's reward and there's something in it for them in in both of those scenarios so i think remembering that is is really key you guys are um really talkative <laughs> just like baby mode over here i don't usually get too soon baby mode but he's kind of he's a little bit baby mode i miss so much the baby macaw wing flap when they'd be like wah and it's like it comes off as an involuntary wing flap i love the baby wing flap I don't uh, see the baby uh, wing flap very much anymore. Uh, uh, will you baby uh, wing flap? Oh, that was a little bit of it. <laughs> I don't believe that birds will get more bonded to one another unless your relationship sucks. It starts off sucking and it continues to suck. So if you just continue to prove that you're not worthwhile, that you're not positively associated with anything, then yes, that other bird is gonna be safer. Um, it's gonna be more comfortable around that other bird. And that's just like a natural, a natural thing. But I think that if you're actually working towards having a good relationship, that's not something that will normally happen. Um, also, I'm a huge advocate of working with each bird individually so maybe having them housed separately until you've developed a relationship and then putting them together every so often but again it's a balance i really believe that, that there's a balance and you guys are just constant <laughs> constant what um, that was a second of quiet <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys where these guys are housed um so obviously right now we're just hanging out in my garden and again my bird oh we're having a foot check <laughs> that was common uh my birds are free flight trained outdoors so that means they come back when i call them from flying outside which they obviously have no interest in flying right now so free flight trained doesn't always mean flying it also means hanging out but I'm gonna show you what their enclosures look like and I just wanted to say that free flight thing so that you guys don't take out your untrained birds outside thinking that these guys aren't trained or something. So, those of you new to the channel. So this is my aviary setup out here. I have two different, well I have three different aviary setups. One is indoors, this one is outdoors at this location and I have another one at another at my house that's also outdoors. So this is four aviaries. They are six foot diameter, except for this one that you see right here. This is, oh, this is, I think more of like a four foot diameter. That one's a bit smaller. So I like to house all of my birds separately in these. And then the ones indoors are five by eight. And you can see Cressy, my African gray is in here by herself. So this is Cressy, my African gray. And how I have this currently set up is that everybody does have their own aviary so over here in this one is my toko toucan brocco and then comment tisa are in these so this one and then the other one diagonal to here so everybody's in their own enclosure here and then at my house currently i have bondi and jinx and they're both in their own aviaries as well so look at these handsome guys you guys are so handsome <laughs> You are you're so handsome. I love you guys. I love you guys. Do you want to come? Oh, what a good boy. What a good boy. But anyways, so that gives you an idea of the enclosures that I'm keeping my birds in. I don't do normal cages. <laughs> I try to keep them as big as possible uh, just so that the birds um, are keeping healthy. One of the big things for me is I want their feather condition to be pristine. So that means lots of natural sunlight, lots of bathing, lots of space so that they're not ruining them on the cage bars. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> so that is the big reason that I use aviaries both outdoors and indoors um, they're my go-to i want my birds to have as much space as possible to have opportunities for foraging for exercise when they're not flying i want them climbing and active 
Um, I want to create as much enrichment for them as possible inside their enclosures. And yeah, I just want it to be the best that it can possibly be for them. If I'm super honest, I've been daydreaming about just netting in five acres. <laughs> Just netting the whole thing and having them just out in that, I feel like it'd be amazing. So, someday, guys, someday. You guys deserve that, huh? Some big property, just fly around. And netted because I wouldn't have to worry about predators at that point, hopefully, if it's strong enough netting. So, it's not to keep them in, it's to keep other things out, huh?